Hi, my name is Keely Mitchell, and today I'm here with one of our high school assistant principals, Mr. Zarmack. Mr. Zarmack, how are you doing today? Good, Keely. How are you? I'm good. So my first question is, what's it like being a high school assistant principal? Uh, it's busy. Um, you know, there's always stuff going on, things to do. So the biggest thing is it, it's busy, it's fast-paced, um, but it's also very enjoyable throughout the day. That's good. keeps you moving. How does it differ from being a gym teacher with younger kids to being with high school students? Um, I always joke that I went from the, the kid that everybody loved at the elementary school to the guy that everybody hated at the high school. Um, but, you know, it is, it's really nice because here at the high school you could talk to the kids, you could have conversations with them, and, and you could have big teachable moments with them that hopefully they carry out through the rest of their life. Um, whenever I was at the elementary, it was more of, you know, whatever the kids are interested in, building off of that to make them excited um, and, and to create those connections with the kids to, to build off of. Is there a change in pace since becoming an assistant principal? Do you prefer being a principal or a gym teacher? Uh, the change of place, the, the pace is the same. Um, now that I've been here for a couple years, I'm a little bit more comfortable with everything. Um, depending on the day, though, I, you know, it, it was fun being a, uh, an elementary phys ed teacher, working with the kids, the, the excitement uh, of the kids. Um, but, you know, I, I really like what I do, and I'm really happy that I made the decision to come into administration. That's good. Is there any complications as an assistant principal that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, n not on a day-to-day -day basis. There's sometimes where things happen that it could be complicated, and but overall, every day is different. There's never the same day. Um, so it just depends on what happens that day and, and what there is to work through. From teaching to help running a school, what would you say the biggest difference is? Uh, whenever you're a teacher, everything, you know, you, you kind of, you have your plans going into the class period. But being an administrator, you could have a plan, but it doesn't always work out that way because other things could come up. Um, so you have to be very flexible with and, and organize and manage your time well. Would you like to change anything in the high school to make it easier for the students? Why or why not? I, I want to make it more challenging for the students, not easier for the students. But uh, there are some uh, there are some different ideas that Mr. Fischel has been working on and um, and passing down uh, to get Mr. Gauntner and I involved in them as well. Uh, we would like to make some changes uh, starting in the springtime, hopefully, um, to make the environment more welcoming and, and friendly for the students. So we want them to have a voice in, in the school as well. And so we're going to start doing things in the spring to incorporate that. When does your day typically begin, and do you usually end at the same time every day? Uh, I'm here a little bit before 7 to start. Um, and then at the end of the day, it depends. Um, if I'm working on something, I could get it done by staying an extra 15 minutes or a half hour. I usually do. Um, but typically between 3 and 3.30, I leave to go home to see my family. Lastly, what would you say has been your favorite part about becoming an assistant principal? Uh, working with the kids um, in, in times whenever I'm working with them, you know, that could be huge life lessons for them to learn learn from and move on um, or helping a kid through a tough time or, or giving them guidance um, to make good decisions so working with the kids to to move forward and hopefully and see them mature another thing that's been really cool for me is a lot of the kids in the high school i had as elementary students so for instance the juniors were in kindergarten my first year teaching so I know a lot of those kids and to see them grow and move on in life is, is really cool and a lot of people don't get that opportunity in education, but I have, so that's really, it's been very, very cool. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Sarmack. Thank you for your time and I hope the rest of the school year is a breeze. Thanks. Hi, I'm Andrew Wright, and today for our podcast, I'm joined here with uh, Plum High School's assistant principal, Mr. Gautner. How are you doing today, Mr. Gautner? I'm doing all well, Andrew. How about yourself? I'm okay. Um, so, Mr. Gautner, uh, today we're going to be asking you a couple questions. Are you ready to start? Yes, I am. Okay. So, as the assistant principal, what are some of your responsibilities? 
Obviously, I'm the ninth and 10th grade assistant principals, but my responsibilities include also working with the 11th and 12th grade uh, individuals, observations, classroom walkthroughs, discipline, discipline issues. Uh, we work to help enrich the curriculum program of studies, which are classes uh, we've been adding to our program of studies over the last two years with the addition of the semester classes for the English, and we've some of the things we try to pull in in regards to classes we're able to offer, for example, college and high school courses. Mm -hmm. So that's just of some of the few things that entail some of the, my daily work. Nice. Um, what are some things that you personally try to do to improve the school as a whole? Well, as I was just talking about, the curriculum is one of the things that we try to work on as well to you know increase the rigor and relevance of what's going on and also bringing some of those college and high school classes from Seton Hill, uh, CCAC, Pitt, some of those other universities we're trying to make uh, contact with to develop those relationships with. Some of the things that we have going on right now is our positive behavior support program, and I'm sure you guys are aware of that. That's when the students have the incentive to kind of show what are the positive behaviors that should be exhibited in the building, and then we do a reward system. We do those weekly drawings. Uh, students have an opportunity to win parking passes, season tickets to events, dance tickets, and gift cards, et cetera. And those gift cards have been, prom uh, have been given to us by our PTA. Okay. Uh, is there anything you would want to say to the future students? If so, what? I've noticed over the last couple of years with our seniors, just when you get to high school, take the first two years, freshman and sophomore years, very seriously because yeah. in the end you're trying to get caught up on, like, maybe I should have spent a little bit more yeah. time studying, focus on some of that time management skills, mm -hmm. and also get involved in extracurricular activities. It doesn't have to right. be – a job, but just even if it's an after-school event where you're making those relationships, mm -hmm. would you agree in regards? To I I do agree with that. Time management uh, was one of my problems starting like freshman sophomore, but um, yeah. So moving off of um school-related topics, you were the coach of the senior powder puff team. How was that experience? I thoroughly enjoyed it. This was my third year doing this activity, and. It, it, it's always great because it gives me an opportunity to get to know more of the students I wouldn't necessarily get, necessarily get to meet or mm -hmm. see on a daily basis. But just having to see the students outside of the, of a, of the school setting is really enjoyable. And having that opportunity to work with some of the other teachers makes it uh, that much more um, fun. Yeah, it seems like it would be a good time. Um, the seniors ended up losing. Was that because of poor coaching or the bad refs? Uh, listen, you saw the game. We it was tied, or cl what was it, seven? Not then, or close to that at halftime. And then just, you know, I, I think we had some bad calls going on. I don't want to say anything about the refs. I don't want to get fined um, by our commissioner, but I, I believe the one was the senior, and I, th I think he was kind of going against us. I'm not going to mention names, but I think we know who we're talking about. Oh man. <laughs> Okay, outside of school, what are some things you'd attempt to do to improve the community? So some of the events that I actually incorporate, uh, excuse me, I include my children in is, is to feed the poor. There's an, ev an event that my, my wife works at Carnegie Mellon, so we typically go down there each year to help you know, with that fundraiser, um, bagging the food. Some of the other events we participate in as volunteers would be the Special Olympics. Uh, we During the holidays, we like to. You know, obviously participate with the telethon we, we help to raise that money or and make those donations but also in regards to uh, our student my children like to put we put together care packages to send overseas for uh, our our vets or excuse me our soldiers that's nice i like that on a more serious note what do you think of our annual telethon that we were just talking about and um the students that let that produce and create it I think it's fantastic. Have for our students had that opportunity to participate in that event uh, and to raise that much money for you know those le those less fortunate speaks volumes about the students that we have. It shows the dedication and the commitment that they've put in, and and, and, that, and that's it's a big commitment and it's a it's a long and tiring event. But you know I'm very proud of our students, and you know I stand behind that telethon 100%. I mean it's it's for a great cause. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you also participated in this year's telethon. What was that like? 
I enjoy it. You know, I, the, the fact that, you know, it gives me an opportunity to sit down one on one with one of our students. Uh, I enjoy the questions that they ask me. And each year, it's, you know, sometimes there's a time constraint to it. Yeah. This year, I missed out on the, uh, uh, the trivia questions, but I had an opportunity to go back and look at those answers, which I, I would have gotten them all right because I knew the answers. Fair enough, fair enough. So I heard that you used to run marathons and races uh, such as that. Do you still participate in events events like that? And if not, why? Currently, I'm not. I don't participate in uh, the marathons. I've, I'm looking to kind of get back into it. Uh, as you get a little bit older, your body slows down a little bit. I think it's my, my rotator cuff. Uh, but so I, I've actually, I'm in the process of training again. I believe one of our students, her father, um, in the district, he does Ironman. So I'm in the process of working with him to kind of get some information. He's going to help guide me through that. I might have to start off with like a mini one, mm -hmm. like one lap in the pool, walk around the neighborhood. I mean, whatever works, right? Um, that's all the time we have for today, Mr. Gartner. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's podcast. That concludes this podcast, and I hope everyone has a great week. Hi, my name is Jessica Frew, and I'm here with Mr. Fischel, the principal of Plum Senior High School. How are you doing today, Mr. Fischel? Fantastic, Jessica. That's great. So I have a couple questions I'm going to be asking you. I'm ready. So how has the school year been going so far? I think the school year has been going very well. Uh, I'm learning a lot, being new to the position, seeing all the amazing stuff that goes on here at the high school. To be honest with you, I never knew all the cool stuff that happens here. Mm -hmm. So this being my first school year at the high school, Everything's new. Everything's like, I can't believe that you guys do this amazing stuff. So I'd say it's going well. That's amazing. So at the beginning of the school, you kind of touched on this a little bit. You were the principal at Oblock Junior High School for many years. What kind of adjustments did you have to make in order to be the pr principal of the high school? Well, I talked about this at, at the telephone a little bit. The biggest adjustment was I, I, was, at the o, I was at Oblock for 24 years. I knew every crack and crevice of that building. I knew every room, every closet. When I came here, um, I didn't know how to get to different rooms. I didn't know room numbers. I did One time I got lost. Like I ended up in this stairwell and I went up the steps and there was this little gym. And I thought, I have no idea where I am right now. So the biggest transition has been learning the big building, the bigger building. I know all the students, mm -hmm. I know all the faces, so that hasn't been a problem. The bigger school definitely seems to be a bigger adjustment. What's the most difficult part of being the high school principal versus the O Block one? Um, I don't know that there is a more difficult part. Being, being an administrator, uh, there are parts of the job that are more difficult than other parts of the job. I hate to suspend students. I hate to have to discipline somebody, but I don't think there's something that's harder about the high school than at Old Block Junior High. Well, that's good. I can remember when you were a principal in the junior high, you were very big on reading. You know, we always read in the lunchroom. Um, why do you think reading is so important? Well, I hope you know the answer to that. I hope after all those years at the junior high, you, you know the answer. I honestly believe that you reading is the best thing you can do for yourself. It's like doing a mental push-up. My goal as an administrator is to make sure that you're as smart as possible. Well educated, but as smart as possible. And the more you read, the bigger your brain power is. That's amazing. Reading is very important. So what is the best part of your job and why? Um, the best part of my job uh, is just getting to work with all the students and getting to see you guys all grown up. I always tell people, when I see them later on, that everybody stays in eighth grade in my mind until I see them. Well, now that's not the case anymore. And I had a young man who I worked with at the junior high, one of my first days here at the high school. He's now a senior, and he came to me and he said, hey, I want you to know, um, I don't do that silly stuff anymore. 
I've grown up. And I thought, wow, it's true. The best part of this job is getting to see you students become young men and young women. And it, it's been exciting. That's amazing. We love having you up here at the high school. Well, thank you. There's no doubt that you are a morning person. You're always telling every kid every morning how they are. How are you so positive that early in the morning? To be honest with you, it's 7 o'clock. When you guys are coming through the door, it's not early for me. I get up around 4 in the morning. Um, I have some quiet time. So my morning time is usually a little bit quiet. But then by the time I get here and you guys are coming through at 7, it's midday for me. And to be quite honest, it wouldn't matter what time of the day. I'm just excited to see you guys come in the building. That really is amazing. So our last question, what advice do you have for someone who wants to be a principal one day? Um, if you want to be a principal, you need to be a principal for the right reasons. And I think the right reasons is because, the right reason is because you want to help students. Mm -hmm. And you, you got to go be a teacher, learn how everything works in the classroom, and then you have to go and do everything educationally. But the most important thing is you have to want to be in this office because you want to help students. That really is amazing. So thank you for taking time out of your day to answer some questions. That's all we have for today. Hi, I'm Alexa Oros here at Pivik Elementary with their principal, Mrs. Gestrich. How are you today, Mrs. Gestrich? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thanks. So my first question is, how long have you been at Pivik and how did you get your start here? Um, I've been with a district for 19 years, but my uh, last four years have been here at Pivik. Mm -hmm. I was actually a teacher here in fifth grade, and then uh, when Dr. Yamnitsky was promoted to assistant superintendent, this position mm -hmm. became available and it was the right match for me. So that's whenever I started here. Do we have like a lot of experience then here? Yes. So what exactly does your daily job entail? Well, um, it, it's a lot of uh, meetings with staff and um, students and, and parents, uh, trying to make sure that the programs that we have in mm -hmm. place for the kids are, are the right programs and uh, resources that the teachers need I can provide. Uh, I like spending time in the classroom so that I can see what's happening uh, with the students and while mm -hmm. they're learning be able to watch those uh, moments with their with their teachers but um, a lot of a lot of meetings unfortunately yeah. it does take me away from the classroom sometimes but um, each and every one of them is important in the the success of the school so we, we spend a lot of time together with the, the staff. Definitely a lot so out of all those things what do you think is the most challenging? Probably making sure that um, the, the students have everything that they need in order to be successful. It, mm -hmm. it really is, um, it's individual and there are 750 students here, so actually 751 students here. Uh, we just had a new student join us today. And um, so it is, it's challenging to make sure that each and every student has um, what their individual needs are for educational success. Yeah, it's definitely a big challenge. So it's different not having fifth and sixth graders around because they were more mature than even the fourth graders. How does having younger grades in the whole school affect everything? Well, the fifth and sixth graders really had their own wing and mm -hmm. they, they uh, switched classes and they had different teachers that you know, they interacted with. Um, they really were, were pretty independent from the rest of the school, but it has changed our perspective from a support um, uh, for our younger students. We're very early literacy mm -hmm. and early numeracy uh, focused now. We do a lot of things to build a love of learning because uh -huh. this is the student's first opportunity to, to come to school and we try to make it as fun as we can so that they want to be here each day. Yeah, definitely. So what was it like having a new playground built in one day? Because you guys did have that big project kaboom thing. Yeah. So what was that like? It was unbelievable. Um, we worked for months to prepare for that. Uh, a lot of paperwork, the grant process, um, and organizing and, and trying to get uh, the all of the components put together um, from the Duquesne Light uh, sponsorship uh, with their financial support, um, the Habitat for Humanity out of Allegheny Valley, uh, their their support, their, their knowledge base, um, everything put together with the volunteers that we had um, brought a playground from 
from a dream to reality in, mm. in about six and a half hours. Uh, the kids love it, and um, it's well received by the community. We have people use it in the evenings and on the weekends as well. Um, but it is. Um, it was truly uh, the idea behind the whole playground project was to bring inclusive play for all of our students so no matter what their challenges may be physically they can go out with their classmates and play together and they don't have to worry about what they can or cannot do physically and so it it, it kind of leveled the playing mm -hmm. field for everyone so it was a great it was a great day yeah it's great to hear because it really did turn out amazing so my final question what do you think is the most rewarding part of your job um, probably just the the opportunity to watch students succeed um, you know they they get out of their car in the morning so excited to come into school or get off the bus and and run into you know can't wait to tell their teacher something that opportunity to to um, work with this staff and with these families to make students love learning new things mm -hmm. um, is a great great blessing that I'm, I'm very fortunate yeah. to have definitely makes all the work worth it Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Mrs. Gastrich, and thank you everyone for watching. Have a nice day. Hi, my name is Gabby Nichols, and I'm here at Plum High School with the Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Yaminski. How are you doing today? I am great. That's good. So, what is it like being the super, the Assistant Superintendent? It's busy. Uh, there's a lot of meetings that I go to. Uh, there's a lot of different items related to school that I have to juggle. Uh, but it's also exciting because I'm always working on new things and learning new things and meeting new people. That's good. What are the responsibilities that come with your job? Uh, first and foremost, I'm in charge of the academics for the district along with Dr. Walsh. And so we have to make sure that we have a curriculum in place so that all the teachers know what they're so supposed to be teaching. Uh, we have to, I have to make sure that the students have access to everything they need so that they can get their education. Uh, so those are two of the most important things. Um, I'm responsible for the principals and for the directors of the different departments to make sure everybody does their job. That sounds exciting. You were the principal at PIVIC. What was that like for you? It was fantastic. There is nothing better than seeing a child start school at age five and then leave there in sixth grade at uh, 12 or 13 years old and watch them grow and learn and turn into a really neat person. And while you were there, the buildings changed. Can you describe how that transition was? Oh, yeah, it was, well, it was long and it was uh, very, very interesting because I got to learn more than I cared to know about actually building a building. <laughs> um, didn't really know that much about building a building, but the, the buildings themselves were completely different. We went from a very, very old building that was had, I think, outlived its usefulness to brand new, sparkling clean, and it really even changed the way people felt about being there. That's great. And what was the most challenging thing about being the principal there? Um, probably the most challenging thing is to see children in distress or children in need um, and feel like you, you can't do as much as you would like to do to help them. When did you first know that the education system was right for you? I probably knew from the time I was very young, at least that's what my parents tell me, because I was always telling everybody what to do and and um, being in charge. Uh, I think when I finally uh, worked with children when I got older uh, and worked with other adults who worked with children, I think I figured it out. That's great. And last year you were the acting superintendent. Um, did that experience change anything about the way you do your job today? Uh, I think it does because it gave me about the broadest perspective one could have about what the workings of a school district. Uh, so I am able, I hope, to see things from multiple perspectives, more perspectives than I did before. Um, and I think any time that you can do that, you're much more sensitive to what everybody does and how they do it, and you're much more responsive uh, to people and to their needs and to their wants. 
I agree. Lastly, we heard you were a grandmother. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, that is probably um, next to having my own kids. It's the most amazing thing. Uh, it's fantastic. And if you had time, I'd show you all the zillion pictures <laughs> I have on my phone. Um, she's wonderful, and it's just amazing to see your own children as parents. Congratulations, and thank you for your time today. Thanks. Back to the studio. Hi, I'm Mallory Razik, and I'm here with Dr. Rainier Hershey. She's going to be telling us a little bit about what she does here at Plum High School. So what exactly is your job here at Plum High School? Uh, my position here at the Plum Borough School District for students K-12 to is uh, as the Director of Special Education. So what is a typical day at work for you? Uh, every day for me is pretty different. Um, I support students K-12 to in the district. We have over 500 students that have special education needs. Um, and they attend a variety of different educational programs, so I am in charge of making sure that their needs are being met. Uh, I attend meetings with families. Um, I help to organize programs and different intervention services that we provide to our students. Um, what is your favorite part about your job? I think I love that every day is different, and I'm super busy, so I'm always out um, working with students. Um, trying to address problems and problem solve. Um, so I enjoy that having uh, something different to do every day uh, makes my job exciting and challenging. Um, are there any difficult parts about your job? Yes. Uh, problem. I mentioned that problem solving is something that I do on a regular basis, so it's definitely challenging sometimes to try to figure out how to best meet the needs of our students um, in our school settings and make sure that they're having every opportunity to be part of the general education classroom, to be part of their neighborhood schools, and trying to develop programs that meet their needs it can sometimes be tough. Um, what is your biggest achievement about your career? Uh, in my career, I also do some work in higher education, so I do some teaching at the college level, and through that I have written a textbook um, for students, um, about students that are struggling, um, and we use that in a course that I teach. Um, and I've also found that the research that I've done to develop that textbook has been really helpful in my position here at, at Plum. And, um, uh, I, a lot of the strategies that I use um, here when I'm working with students and in higher education when I'm teaching college students, um, I include it in that, that textbook, and uh, that is definitely a big achievement for me. That is really cool. Uh, so what are you looking to improve this year in the special ed department? Uh, this year, every year is different. I've been in the district for three school years. Um, so every year I'm trying to continue to improve the programs that we offer to our students. Um, this particular school year we're looking at um, implementing an MTSS system, which means a multi-tiered system of support for our students that addresses kids who don't need special education but are still struggling with the general education curriculum and meet, meeting benchmark. Um, so right now I'm working on trying to establish a system of how we're meeting those students' needs um, and identifying assessments and intervention tools that we need. Um, so that's been a big um, project for me this year. And we are also looking at um, other programs that we can provide to our special education students so that more of our students can stay here in the school district rather than going to separate private schools. Um, to get their services. So we're trying to continue to expand to make sure that all of our kids here in the district's needs are met and um, they can be here with the, their typical peers in their neighborhood schools. Away from this job, what do you do in your free time? Um, well, I have, um, I'm married and I have four children, so that is pretty much all I do is uh, try to make sure that my kids are where they need to be and um, are in, you know, enjoying life, and so um, I'm busy with them, and um, I really enjoy that. Thank you for your time. That's all we have for today. Hello, this is Hunter Diziki, and I'm here with Dana Ayera, asking about questions for a job for Plum High School. Hi, how are you, Hunter? Good. 
So what is the most uh, common uh, problem you come across for your job dealing with students? Um, I think more so now we see a lot of students that have school anxiety or anxiety in general, um, which causes some you know, tendencies to not want to go to school or make it more difficult. So that's probably one of the most popular, I want to say popular, most frequent um, things that we see. We also see a lot of um, ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. What do you feel when dealing with students uh, you want to help with? Um, mixed emotions. Um, you know, you want to help them as much as possible. Um, I think it's so easy for us to try to make things really easy for students, but what we have to do is really prepare them for the future and prepare them to be able to handle situations on their own and give them those tools and resources. For when you prepare, do you include the college or do they have to pick it themselves? Yeah, as part of um, as part of our department, special education, pupil services, um, we always look at helping students to prepare them for after school, so after high school. Part of that is called our transition services for special education. Um, we look at what students might do after high school, so whether that's some kind of training program, whether it's um, a, a job right away or college, um, we look to provide whatever skills they may need um, for the best um, outcome. That's great. Is there like any jobs that they most common pick? Um, I don't think so. I think just like the, the world, um, students are different and have different strengths um, and things that they enjoy and it's important to pick something that they enjoy as well. Um, so we see kids go all different, all different routes. That's nice. Working everywhere is always the best point for decisions. Yes. So I got another question. Uh, do you get personally attached to the problems they come to you about? Um, I think after doing this for about eight years, um, I don't become so um, emotionally attached or, or things like that. Definitely early on, um, I think that with experience, you, I've just become um, more equipped to better handle some of the situations and be able to provide tools and resources for parents and teachers. So um, that has helped. Of course, every once in a while you get you know wrapped up in a situation just because you care so much. With some of the problems, do you wish you could do more personally uh, out of your job, I mean? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm a relatively new mom. I have a four-year-old and a three-year-old. So, you know, I often find myself kind of putting myself into that mom um, position, I think, just because we care about our students. We want to see them um, strive to be the best that they can be. How do you approach uh, parent confidentiality, like uh, parent conferences with other people? Um, I think you know the best the best thing to do um, is to try to, to to treat others like you want to be treated right the golden rule so um, with parents and teachers I try to be um, honest and provide valuable feedback and try to think about you know what would I want someone to say to me or how would I want somebody to say something to me um, we want to make sure that we're doing what's best for the students and also um, making sure that the parents and teachers are comfortable um, to come to myself and ask questions and ask for support. And so that's always my number one goal. All right, number one goal is always great to help with others. So what do you envision a typical work day to be really? Um, not typical is a typical work day for a school psychologist. Um, we're often you know, planning to try to test students um, work with students individually, one on one. We get called into meetings, um, lots and lots of emails, um, answering questions from teachers and parents, um, talking to outside providers, sometimes pediatricians or outside therapists or psychiatrists, um, all of that is involved, but um, not so much a typical day. <laughs> so what got you into this job? Um, I have a, an older cousin who is a school psychologist, and so that kind of opened my eyes to um, this job, and that's how I got into it. What were you in high school? Did you have a psychologist like this before? Or? Uh, we did, yeah. Every district um, has a school psychologist. I think maybe most people are not aware that they have one. Um, some districts have one or two, some have four, um, depending on how big the district is. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I don't think so. I really enjoy my job here. I've been at Plum for about six years, um, and I really feel at home here, and I'm seeing kids that I've worked with six years ago, you know, grow up, and so um, that's really rewarding, and I really enjoy working here. I think, I think Plum's a great place to be. Thank you. This has been Hunter Daiziki and uh, Dana, Diana, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with.
Hi, I'm Gina Mara here with Dan Lalita, the Director of Educational Technology Innovation. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Gino. How are you? Good, thank you. So how long have you been here at Plum High School? Um, I've been at Plum High School since September 17th. I was previously at Deer Lake School District for 11 years. All right. Uh, can you walk me through your typical work day? Yeah, my typical work day normally is uh, going in meetings, trying to create a process and procedures here at my new job. Um, and it's been a learning step for me to learn how they do things at Plum compared to how we did them at Deer Lake. So um, it's been a whirlwind of just going in different directions and um, as we move forward trying to standardize processes and things that we do here at Plum um, to make the most sense. All right, sounds good. Uh, is there any, is there going to be any new technology coming into our school district in the future? Um, yeah, I'm going to try to bring as many resources for the teachers and students as possible moving forward. That's what I'd like to hear. Um, personally, what would you say is your favorite technology to use and why? My favorite technology um, throughout my career has been, I started off as a programmer and I got away from that. I was a systems network guy. Um, my favorite thing to do is programming switches and networking. All right. Um, is there anything special that you like about your job? I love, I love giving students opportunities and teachers opportunities um, to create um, a good atmosphere so that our students are prepared after they leave our school. All right. Uh, what brought you to do what you do today? Um, I've always had a passion to uh, give uh, people opportunities, um, especially students. Um, once I got exposed to the educational K through 12 portion of it, I fell in love with it. And seeing the different resources in the classroom and how it impacts the students um, and how uh, it helps them. Me being younger, I get the 21st century skills that you guys live in, that, that world. So um, seeing it work in the classroom and getting you guys prepared, I, I, just, I love seeing the uh, change of atmosphere in education right now. So I love being able to give that to the students. It's good to hear. Uh, can you tell us about your guys' help uh, desk in the library? Sure. So we are going to start first round interviews at the beginning of February. So first week of February, second week of February, the students will interview with myself and Dr. Hyland, and then we're going to, we'll be starting. So right now we have 11 students. Um, I'm collaborating with Mr. Varner over at uh, Forbes, and we've got a student from over there that's going to come over here, and we're just going to continue. Let the students get um, Apple certified, Google certified, and HP certified as well. All right. And what qualities do you think are most important in a technology developer? Um, so the qualities, I would say um, if, you, if you work in a business space, um, you're kind of stuck at, on one thing, whether you be a systems or networking position, you're, you're doing a specific, you're just doing networking and you're just doing the type of vendor that they choose. Um, in the educational space, I always tell people in my field to learn everything because you're, you're, um, exposed to the most current technology and you're exposed to all kinds of different technologies so you kind of run into the other position so at my last district I was a systems and network guy um, whereas in the business world you're more aimed at individual vendors specific um, you know vendors whether it be HP Cisco whatever it may be and then you're you're aimed at different positions whether it be a network or systems admin so in education I always tell and in the computer industry in general I always tell students to be prepared to do everything and learn everything uh, possible across the board all right thank you for the interview thank you I'm Gina Mara here with Dan Letta. on to the next interview Hi, I'm Matt Carroll here with Dr. Highland. Dr. Highland, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Matt. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for asking. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with everybody. Yeah, no problem. So, how, how, how did you get your job here at Plum, and how are you liking it so far? Uh, I would say, first off, I love it. I absolutely love the job. Um, I am so excited uh, to work with the students and the teachers in the community. Um, I have said to anyone that will listen that there is so much potential in this community. We do a lot of great things, but uh, I think we haven't tapped what we are capable of doing in this district. And I think that's what attracted me to this district. Um, it's, you know, it's no secret that the, the dis district has gone through some difficult times over the past three, three years. Uh, three or four years and uh, whether it was you know uh, the issues that were happening um, 
you know, with the criminal issues that happened or the financial issues. Um, you know, I think people have to look past some of those things and know that we have some wonderful kids here that have uh, amazing talent and we have fantastic teachers. And I think we just need some sort of strategic uh, vision about where we want to go. And I think once we all start doing that, there is no limit to what this district can do. So I saw that as, uh, as an opportunity, an opportunity to take what I've learned um, in what I would consider two of the best districts in the entire state, if not the country. And uh, I had the opportunity to be a teacher and administrator in the Mount Lebanon School District. Okay. And most people would uh, say that that's a pretty good district. Yeah. And then I had the opportunity after that to take the skills that I learned at Mount Lebanon and implement some of those at North Allegheny and also learn what happened at North Allegheny. And I think it just made me a better administrator and I think I'm going to take those things. I know I'm going to take those things that I've learned and hopefully uh, parlay that here at, at Plum to hopefully make it a better place. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome to hear as a student here. Uh, so if you could, what are some of your responsibilities as superintendent? Uh, I am the, I'm responsible for basically everything that goes on in this district. Um, that's an awfully big responsibility. So I would say primarily the most important thing is that Parents want to make sure that they know that their kids are safe. And in the times that we live in now, uh, safety has become even more of an important factor. So I think my ultimate responsibility is to make sure that we keep our kids and our employees as safe as we possibly can. And I'm sure most people will um, attest to that we are taking that very seriously. Uh, at the high school, uh, we're taking a more comprehensive approach to the lockdown process. Yeah, for sure. We have hired uh, some armed police officers and started our own police force. We've started the alerta system. And there are a lot of things behind the scenes that we're doing as well. We did a comprehensive um, evaluation to look for the weaknesses that we have in our district in terms of safety and they provided us a report and we're trying to implement every one of those and we've had some nice cooperation lately with the borough uh, who allotted us approximately one hundred sixty thousand oh, wow. dollars to really make some some good changes so we appreciate the the borough's um, financial resources that they're um, sharing with us so I would say it's safety and then secondly you know we uh, education is why we're here and so we want the kids to get the absolute best education they possibly can and we want to exceptionally prepare them for success and I think the kids and the parents have a right to expect the very best from us from an from an educational perspective and I think we have some work to do in that area uh, we're doing great things but we can certainly do a lot better than where we are and uh, and we intend to do that so uh, I would say those two are uh, those two things are the primary responsibility and then ultimately you know we work for the community and so we want to have an environment where people feel really great about our school district and we, we want to have a great reputation for this school district because ultimately we want eventually you're gonna grow up and you're gonna move out and uh, we want new people to come in and the way that they come in is that they feel good about the school district so when younger families are looking for homes we want them to come to the Plum Borough School District and so I think if we do those two things that I mentioned I think we have a really good opportunity to uh, to make this the very best place that we can that's awesome what are some challenges that you face on an everyday basis uh, you, you never know what you're gonna get when you come to work because you work in a district, 3,000 kids or so, and with 3,000 kids and their parents, um, there are going to be challenges that come up. They're human beings, uh, and so things come up. And so uh, that's what I love about education. You just never know what you're going to get. You know, I do know that I have board meetings on uh, er the first Tuesday and fourth Tuesday, uh, fourth Tuesday of the month, and so you have to prepare for those to make sure that the community is fully informed about the decisions that we're making, and we try as much as possible to inform the public about what it is that we're doing and I think we do a pretty good job of that you can always improve and you can always you know share more information but we're doing our best to make sure that um, we have people involved in the educational process nice. so I understand that you're the principal at North Allegheny uh, how did you adjust to a higher position as opposed to the principal 
to superintendent? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I would probably say that most people don't necessarily recognize unless uh, maybe they do outside North Allegheny is huge yeah. <laughs> yeah you know I had 1300 kids in my building oh. alone and that's only ninth and tenth grade oh, wow. so I had the opportunity to be in a really big district and so that I think that really prepared me quite well for this position I think the other thing is just working with people uh, and having leadership skills I am you know my leadership skills uh, I would say one of the things that I will do is I delegate and I let other people I try to get the very best people around me who are very good at what they do and trust them to go and do their jobs uh, I am not a micromanager and uh, I just don't think you get the best out of people when you sit there and you watch every single thing that they do you trust but you verify to make sure that they're doing what they need to do. And that, I think I learned that at North Allegheny. Uh, I think those, those high expectations that, uh, that the folks in North Allegheny and the folks in Mount Lebanon have, uh, I want to bring the same level of expectation to Plum. And I think people in Plum have high expectations, but I think it can even be higher. Uh, so we're going to push people and we're going to hold people accountable for those expectations. And I think we really make progress when people raise their own expectations. Yeah. So, and that's just not the employees. I think that comes from the students as well. The students have to demand more from themselves and they have to demand more from their teachers. Um, I had a conversation with the student school board rep today, Jonah Babusi, uh, and we talked talked about safety and I told him if uh, you know he has to you know in every single class you have to know if there's a lockdown do you know what to do in that particular class and if you don't it's on you to challenge your teacher to explain where do I go what do I do and I think that keeps everyone safe so I think we have to raise our level of expectations to where uh, what we are capable of doing and I think they're like I said multiple times we are capable of so much more in this district and I fully intend to bring out those capabilities and with the help of a lot of good people that's awesome <coughs> what are you uh, looking I know you're talking about the lockdown and everything what are you looking to improve in plum this year so one of the things that I think is really important for not only the community but the teachers and the students to recognize uh, this that's in front of us is in every single classroom and you know I want people to start to see that we have a vision about where we are going. One of the things that I did when I first came here in uh, March of last year, and even before I started, I, met, I went and spoke with every single faculty, and I asked them three questions. I said, what do you like about this place? What, what makes you proud to be from Plum? And the second question was, what is it that you don't like about Plum? What can we do better? And the third question I ask is, what advice would you give the new guy? And the, what I got back from the teachers was, the first thing is, is that they didn't feel as though we had a strategic vision. We didn't have an idea of where we're going for. So if you look at it, it's as simple as to say, if you don't have goals, how do you know where you're going or what are you trying to achieve and so we laid out six simple goals um, and it was based on feedback that we got from everybody so that we could have that strategic vision and that's what the teachers wanted they wanted to be wh what's the direction that the district's going so I would say that's one thing that they said the other thing that they said was they wanted to improve our reputation and yeah. I, I would agree and I think when I talk with students and even the I don't know if kids recall this, but we also put out a survey to teachers, I'm sorry, to students and to parents. Okay. And we asked them a number of questions and they provided a lot of feedback. And one of the last questions on the survey was, are you, are you proud to be from Plum? And so that number was a good number, but it wasn't a great number. And again, it goes back to those expectations. We want, we want everyone to be proud of being from Plum, and uh, we will get there. So what we decided to do is we laid out six simple goals, and they're right here. And the first one is keep our school safe. And it's kind of what you and I talked about a little bit earlier, that, that safety is the most important thing. And then the next thing is you know, increasing our levels of student achievement and academic rigor. You know, one of the things that the kids said in their surveys is that they felt as though they could be more challenged. Um, we want to find that right line where kids 
are challenged, not so much that they feel frustrated, but we want to continue to push them. And so we need to increase our levels of student achievement. And there are things that we're in the process of doing to make sure that that happens. Um, the third goal was to maximize fiscal responsibility. Uh, when I came to this district, we were $5.2 million in debt. And oh, wow, yeah. we had to take out over the past, within the last five years, we took out $12 million in loans because essentially what was happening is we were spending more money than we were bringing in. And that can only last for so long. And so there were some really, really difficult decisions that had to be made last year to make sure that um, we were meeting our financial obligations. And the state says you have to have a balanced budget. And so we tried our very best to make sure that we had a balanced budget. And so some difficult decisions were made. But that is one of our goals. We're looking to try and maximize our fiscal responsibility. So we're actually going out and looking for alternative sources of revenue, too. Um, another one of the goals was to satisfy our customers and community. Think about it. You and the guys behind the camera that no one will see, but the people in the project know who did it, you are customers. Our job is to be here for you. Uh, you're not here for me. I'm here for you. And so our job is to make sure that you have the very best school system that we can possibly have. We want you guys and girls to come to school and feel proud about being here and love coming to school. Now, dealing with teenagers and dealing with kids, most kids, you know, they don't love coming to school. They just do it because they it's compulsory. But we want kids to actually love being a plum student we want them to want to come to school and we want to satisfy our, our you know our parents and the rest of the community as well and so finding that right balance is uh, something that we'd like to do um, we want to cultivate a first-rate workforce we want your teachers to be the best teachers in the entire state if not country and um, we want them to and if we can't maximize student achievement if we don't have the very best teachers. And uh, we would love to be able to have more time with the teachers to make them better. And, um, and so not only our teachers do we want them to be the best, we want our administrators to be the best. We want our administrative assistants. We want our custodial staff to be the best. And so we're working at um, different avenues to try and make them the best that they can possibly be. And then the other thing is we want to measure against the best. Uh, we want to we we don't want to measure against school districts that are just quote unquote average. We want to set the goal higher, and we want to measure against those those schools that are in the top five or top ten in the state. Uh, we want to be number one in Allegheny County, whether it's test scores, whether it's maximizing fiscal responsibility, whether it's safe. We want to be number one, and uh, and so. If you set your goals low, then you're going to achieve low. But if you set your yep. goals higher, you're going to do a little bit better. So uh, you probably weren't ready for that long of an answer, <laughs> but that's uh, that would be my answer to that question. Well, no, yeah, that's awesome to hear. So wh what has been, if you could measure your achievements, what has been the biggest achievement in your career so far? Uh, well, there are the, there are the, empirical data ones, right? So when I was at North Allegheny, uh, over several years, we had the number one ranked high school in Western Pennsylvania. That's awesome. That, that, yeah, that's awesome. But what I really liked is that kids liked coming to school. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, how do you quantify that? I quantified it by, I was out in the halls and I would talk with kids and they would enjoy coming to school. And to me, that's, that's, that's the thing I'm most proud of. I think the other thing is, um, you know, I take safety very, very seriously. And um, I, I'm very proud of the relationships that I, I built with um, the McCandless Police Department, the, um, the Mount Lebanon Police Department, so that we could keep our kids safe. And I think the kids in my previous schools would tell you, yeah, Highland takes safety pretty darn yep. seriously. And so I'm trying to get our teachers um, to um, and our principals, um, and it's, it's not a real hard thing to do but I want them to think that that's how, how important safety is so I would say that um, from a student achievement perspective I would say those scores uh, were I was pretty proud of having the number one school in um, Pittsburgh Business Times and I would say from a more soft side the idea that the kids enjoyed the environment that I was responsible for leading that's awesome all right now for the million dollar question for the students okay uh, what are the weather conditions, and how do you decide whether a two-hour delay is in need for that day? Okay, so 
Um, this is a question that um, my kids cannot wait <laughs> till I actually have to call a snow day because they, my, my own kids, I have three kids myself, okay. and so they think it's the coolest thing that I get to call a snow delay. I will tell you from a superintendent's perspective, it's the worst call that you can ever make. <laughs> And it's the reason it's the worst call is because no matter what you do, your 50% of the people are going to disagree with what you say. And um, so, but I guess that comes with the job, right? Yep. And so I don't make that decision by myself. I mean, ultimately, I will make that call whether we are okay. delayed or whether we are canceled. Um, but I rely on those folks that are treating the roads. I rely on our bus um, director of transportation. He comes in at two o'clock in the morning on oh, any wow. days that are, yeah, where there's snow, and he'll go and he'll ride all the roads uh, near all the schools. The problem is the timing of the weather. Sometimes the weather comes in early, sometimes it comes in late, sometimes it hit, Plum's a pretty big yeah. burrow, right? So sometimes the weather will hit hard in one part and won't hit hard in another part. And so you have to try and factor all those things in. But going back to our number one goal, which is to keep our schools and by proxy our kids safe, if ultimately we want to get our kids in school but we're not going to sacrifice safety to make that happen so um, I know that's kind of an academic answer to that question um, but if I know like the let's say that we have a couple inches on the ground and we know that we're getting a prediction that there's a big storm you know I was your age once too I would love to know that evening so I could sleep in the next yeah. day right so if I get those opportunities where hey I'm gonna go ahead and make a call early so that people are in aren't inconvenienced we want to do that I think the thing that people have to recognize when we make that call for a delay parents have to take care of their kids they have to make arrangements for their kids that are younger I mean you're a high school kid so it's easy you guys can take care of yourself but a first grader or kindergartner you know even up to you know you know junior high level those kids have to be supervised and yep. so um, so that's where you get 50% of the people are happy and the other 50% aren't so but we do our best and but the most important thing I'd say is to keep our kids safe so well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time for, Absolutely. for us to interview today. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with the kids. And if there's anything that I can do moving forward, just let me know, and I'd love to do it. Will do. It was our pleasure. Awesome. Hello, my name is Garrick Poe with AEO Blocks Principal, Mr. Boyer. So, Mr. Boyer, how are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing good. So, where did you work before uh, O-Block? Um, before O-Block, I was an uh, assistant principal at Pine Ridge Middle School, and previous to that, I was the high school assistant principal at Black Hawk High School. That sounds really good. Do you enjoy working here, and why? Um, I do. It's only been about two months, so I'm still getting to know some of the students and staff, but um, everyone's been very welcoming in this transition and, and helpful and, um, you know, just being patient with me as I uh, transition to the building. That sounds very good. So what made you want to be a principal? Um, that's a good question, actually. I never thought I would be a principal. I always wanted to be a teacher. Um, but when I was a teacher, I was hired out of college, and I had some uh, leadership opportunities to kind of get out in front, of, in front of my other teacher peers, and I enjoyed that leadership opportunity. And so I had some mentors along the way that really kind of pushed me to think differently about my, my career trajectory. Um, and so between you know, some of those leadership opportunities and, and, and also them providing me with some um, backing and, and mentorship, I decided to pursue the principalship. That's not very fascinating. And speaking of this, so what college do you attend, and do you think it was the best college for where you want to go? So currently I attend Point Park University. I'm pursuing my doctorate right now. Um, for my undergraduate, I went to Waynesburg uh, College. It's university now, but college then. Um, the reason I pursued Waynesburg was I had an opportunity to be a dual major in elementary and special education, and also I wanted to continue to play football. Um, when I was you know, being 5'10 and uh, 215 pounds, I wasn't going to go play D1, so D3 was a good fit for me, but also while pursuing my education. And then for my master's, I went to the University of Pittsburgh. I wanted to go to a larger uh, school in Waynesburg and, and, and kind of challenge myself. And so um, those are the three schools that, that I'm attending and have attended. 
That's very good. So since you've been hired here, how where have you learned about the staff? Um, what did I learn about the staff? Uh, the, the staff really is a uh, cohesive team. Um, they get along real well together and they function well together. And so it's been kind of neat to see the inner workings of, the, um, I would say, the family dynamic of the staff. Um, and so that's really appreciative. Uh, many of them have invited me um, and, and kind of into that circle. And again, I appreciate that opportunity. That's very good. So has technology today have impacted we uh, teach our students? I would say definitely. Um, yeah, technology is a is a great tool to enhance learning, and so what we know with our one to one initiative, we've been able to utilize technology to um, engage uh, students differently. Um, the other piece of the technology is it provides that opportunity to use different software pieces, but also that that quick right there information. Um, so students have answers right at their fingertips, um, and so it's it's been neat to see how that's um, grown and how we continue to expand and um, utilize technology to enhance learning. That's very good. So I have a simple question for you. What is the favorite thing about this school? My favorite thing about the school. So I'm still learning. Um, I don't know what my favorite thing is, but again, I think it's really been it's been neat to see the um, that family connection of the staff. Um, I really think we have uh, some some great students here, and so the students also have been welcoming. So I would say that, that definitely the, the staff and the students at this point. Okay. So what do you think Oblock is different from other schools? Different from other schools. Um, hmm. I don't know. It's the one. The one unique thing is Oblock is a junior high. There aren't too many junior high schools um, left within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Most junior highs have gone to a traditional middle school that has a teaming approach, um, and so that's kind of unique about Oblock. Um, another, another, again, another piece I think is just the collegiality of, of the staff and, and the connectedness is a neat piece. Where at other schools, maybe the staff doesn't get along as well. Or they're not as uh, collaborative, and where you know, again. Coming in day one, I could see the inner workings of, of personalities and, and, and people's traits, but also coming together and, and that cohesiveness to work together. And I could tell because I went here for two years, and was, I can say the same thing. So that's all we have for today. Thank you for joining us. Signing off is Garrick Poe. Hello, my name is Noah Scholar, and here with me is the facilities director here at Plum Senior High School, Dr. Mr. Jim McCullen. How is your day going so far, Mr. McCullen? Going pretty good. It's a typical one of those days where you just never know what's going to happen, but that's pretty good. It's good. It's good. So being the facilities director, what is it like keeping up with the changing of all the seasons? Uh, the main thing that we have to do is we have to be a little bit smarter than the uh, weathermen because we have to predict not only the, the season that we're currently in, but what's coming up for the next season, uh, especially when you're trying to plan. Uh, obviously, in the fall, we plan for winter, uh, what's going to take place. Uh, fortunately, Mother Nature's been pretty kind to us so far. Uh, but we have to already start planning for spring sports, uh, what we're doing for field prep and how that's going to work and whether or not we're going to get more snow or rain. So That's fair. Well, it needs to be done. So... Um I've noticed that you and the administration added new like motion sensors in most of the classrooms. What do they do and like how do they help uh, the classroom and all that stuff? Well, what we're doing right now is um, we're in the middle of an investment grade audit for energy savings for the entire district. Uh, we have been uh, installing some of these items that you'll see in the hallways which count uh, occupancies, like how many people walk by, what time of day it is, uh, so we can actually set better lighting and heating and temperature ranges. Uh, the classroom occupancy sensors have uh, been a big help. It's uh, probably around that 30% uh, cost savings in energy by having the lights automatically turn off and we're looking to uh, actually do better than that even in the future. That's awesome. Always got to save that energy. Stay green for sure. Absolutely working towards it. So um, how do you guys keep up like the campus uh, crest trim during the summer and uh, how often is it cut? We actually use an outside contracting firm uh, mostly because of the fact that having them do the work uh, is less expensive than us having to carry extra staff and maintain all of the equipment. Uh, we use an outside firm here and then they will actually mow based on what the needs are. And this last year obviously it was uh, 
trying to mow every time in between a rainstorm. Um, but they'll usually hit it at least once a week, usually twice a week, depending on how fast it's going. That's fair. Makes sense. Always got to cut the grass. So um, how often do you guys tend to do the courtyard? The courtyard here is, uh, is a bit of a challenge. I'd say we try to take care of it at least once a month. Um, we are trying to also look for uh, some alternatives of ways that we can make that a uh, uh, little bit more student friendly or staff friendly, an area that people can actually use um, and do some work with that hillside that is the biggest challenge for the, for the weed growth. So Makes sense. The weed growth in the courtyard is fairly bad, from yeah, what I can tell, yeah, for yeah, sure. It's pretty rough. Yeah. So, like, how do you guys keep the baseball and softball year, uh, softball fields ready year round? We um, we actually, like I said, we use the, the outside firm that does the grass cutting. We also have a company that comes in and does all of our field prep at the beginning of the season. Um, they'll make sure that we have all of the uh, infields, you know, essentially groomed and ready to go, weeded up and cleaned. Uh, and then after that, it'd be the maintenance department will take over and we'll actually work on the dragging the fields, uh, taking care of the dugouts and that. That actually happens from our in-house staff. So it, uh, like I said, it works out pretty well. well. We line the fields and do all of that ourselves. Um, and stay on top of it. And we have some pretty nice looking fields and we want to keep them that way. Of course. The fields, I gotta say, are very nice. So, when do you guys decide to like take the speed bumps out of the, uh, <laughs> out of the ground. Yeah, we were a little late in getting them installed this year. Uh, they usually are in, uh, except for the snow season. And that's where we take them out, usually when we get the first snow, just because otherwise the snow plows will take them out for us. So, um, but once the snow stops, and we'll try to put them back in. And it's mostly just to keep, doesn't matter whether it's adults or, or even students, just try to help keep that speed down because we have a lot of corners that are kind of hard to see around. Makes sense. So, um, what other responsibilities do you have as like the director? What does the job entail? Uh, pretty much a little bit of everything. I'm in charge of all the district's construction, uh, the energy usage, whether it's uh, all of our utilities, um, building maintenance, everything from roofing to the concrete work. Um, right now, like I said, we're working on uh, the security and safety. I'm on the construction side of that. So as they decide to make changes for safety and security, um, uh, I'm in charge of making sure that the plans get done and that we actually bid the work and, and uh, get that squared away. We're working, as a matter of fact, right now on a new security vestibule for out front um, where the current security officers are sitting, will change, and we'll be working uh, in the nurse's suite, the nurse's uh, conference room that's there, so it's going to move over and it'll just change for next school year the way that uh, guests whether it's not you know visitors whatever come into the building makes sense so um, what was a typical work day for you would be like <laughs> <laughs> there's well there's no such thing as a typical work day um, my day usually starts with the first phone call so depending on what it was and this morning my first phone call was from dr. Highland and so that kind of sets the priorities for the day um, but usually I'll come in uh, get started look through emails um, take a look at the work orders for the day the maintenance my daytime maintenance guys will come in uh, and see if there's any emergencies we have to take care of and then we kind of go from there and sometimes the days get over uh, just a little bit after the students leave and sometimes it's five six o'clock at night depending on what we're working on so weather dictates a lot makes sense weather being the facilities director yeah so last question what's your favorite part about be having this job um, I have to tell you that this is uh, I've been in the school facilities business now for about a little over 20 years and uh, I started here in May and I will tell you that this is the best school district that I've worked for um, the people the administration the uh, staff uh, and the students I said it's, it's uh, I enjoy coming to work every day um, and it's uh, which is kind of unique feeling no matter where you work or what you do uh, my favorite part of the day honestly is uh, my favorite part of the job is uh, I, I really like the construction side that's my that's my background background uh, but actually getting things accomplished and fixing things and making it so that the buildings are better whether it's the elementaries or even the high school it's just it's a big plus to me it's a sense of accomplishment Always got good stuff done, so it makes sense to me. Yep. All right, so uh, thank you for your time today, Mr. McCollum, and uh, have fun with your job today. Yep. And hopefully you do more construction stuff. <laughs> All right, back to the studio. Great, thank you.
Hi, I'm Anthony Del Mastro here at Holiday Park with the principal, Dr. Sholo. How are you today? I'm doing well, Anthony. Thanks for being here. Okay, so we're going to ask you a few questions about your school. So how was it moving to the old Holiday Park to the new one? Anthony, it really was a, a smooth transition. A few years ago, whenever this new building was complete, um, we started the large task of transferring all the items uh, from the old Holiday Park, uh, about a half mile down the road here, up here to uh, our campus. And it was a smooth process. We had a number of hands involved. We had a moving company, our staff, they packed a lot of things, and most importantly, our students, of course, yeah. which is first and foremost. But when that happened a couple years ago and we were able to make that transition, uh, here's where we are today. Yeah. Also, how long have you been a principal here at Holiday Park? Anthony, you had to make me uh, think back a long way here. Um, I've been at Holiday Park since 2008. Wow. I've been in the district since uh, 2000, so I'm kind of up there in wow. years. It may not look like it, but yeah, uh, cool. any which way, uh, um, um, yeah, it, it's been a long time, but absolutely enjoyable. That's great. So what is the main thing you want that made you want to become a principal here? There were a number of reasons, and that, that's a great question, but I think the number one reason is to somehow, some way, have a positive uh, impact on the student's journey yeah. uh, here in the Plumborough School District. Uh, ultimately here, our main goal is to not only prepare them and equip them for success, but to get them to the next grade ready to continue having success. Yeah, that's good. So uh, what is your favorite part about being principal here at LA Park? Well, absolutely the students. That That's first and foremost. And uh, with having in this building, we have 625 students in grades five and six. So this year in itself uh, is one of the first opportunities ever in the Plumborough School District that we've had that type of setup. So I'd have to say, again, their energy, their, their love for learning, and along the way, helping them, helping them learn about yeah. not only learning, but uh, life itself. Yeah. So uh, what is the most challenging thing you've had to deal with here? Oh, my. Well, I, I, I'd have to say, like anything, whether it's education or, or out there in the business world, um, the challenges we face are, are not only equipping each of you with the skills to be successful, but at times uh, some of our students need help. They need reinforcement or yeah. maybe something is bothering them. So yeah. um, we try to lean on not only our professional staff, but the students themselves to empower them, to try to power through yeah. maybe some of their difficulties and in, in meeting their needs. But uh, if I had to pick a number one, I would say that. We're, we have a, a, a goal here to meet student needs, not just academically, yeah. but but uh, also socially. Um, yeah, speaking of your students, what is your goals for them this year? Well, as a district, we have six big goals, and safety being the first goal, but we really want to increase not only our student academic achievement, but making sure we're challenging them in ways that they can go beyond what they think they can do. So with these six goals, I'd have to say, again, safety, number one, and secondly, uh, preparing them to have academic success would be the second one. So finally, what is your most memorable moment here at Holiday Park? My most memorable moment? Hmm. Well, it's certainly not the last day of school because yeah. when you guys leave, we, we truly do miss you. But yeah. uh, if I had to pick one, I think when our students have those aha moments, and what I mean by that is – um, maybe for the first time, it's a student who was able to comprehend a, a certain reading passage. Maybe it was a sixth grade student that was able to apply uh, algebraic expressions to something. So yeah. I think all those little aha learning moments that add up to the whole piece here is something that uh, is truly memorable as we um, move you guys along on your educational journey. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Shula, for your time today. Absolutely.
Hi, I'm Isabel Russo, and I'm here with Assistant Superintendent Dr. Rick Walsh. How are you doing today? Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, how are you feeling about entering a new school district and being put in such a high position? Uh, first, uh, for me, professionally and personally, it's been very rewarding to come back to the Plum Borough School District. Uh, I have a lot of roots in the district. I grew up here. Uh, even before this interview, you and I have talked. I graduated with your father. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's given me an opportunity to come back and reconnect with a lot of, of family and friends. But also, it, it gives me the opportunity to work collectively with community, with faculty, and with the other administrators in moving the district forward. That's great to hear. Um, which school districts have you worked for in the past, and do you have any different responsibilities than you had back at your other school districts? Uh, the districts I've worked in the past, um, I started my career in the Mount Lebanon School District. I was an elementary teacher. I worked in two buildings, Lincoln Elementary and Hoover Elementary. Um, Hoover Elementary was a little unique because it was a multi-age looping building, which meant if you were a fourth grade student, I was also your fifth grade teacher and sixth grade teacher. So we had fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teachers or students in the same class. Uh, from there, I was a principal at Trinity, Trinity East Elementary and um, Wexford Elementary located in the Pine Ridge School District. Um, over the last 26 years, a lot of my experiences um, uh, are very similar to my district responsibilities here in the district. Mm -hmm. So um, I've had an opportunity to learn through the years and uh, bring that to the district. That's awesome. Um, so you were saying that you are a Plum High School graduate. How does it feel being able to work back in your hometown? It's awesome. Really, it is. Uh, I, I remember I, my first day was June 4th, and as I was starting um, uh, my career in the district, it was also the last week of school. And during that last week, I had an opportunity to visit Center, Pivik, um, Holiday Park, uh, and all the buildings. And it seemed to me there wasn't a building that I walked into uh, or a meeting that I walked into that I didn't see a familiar face. Uh, so it's, it's been uh, very rewarding to um, uh, reconnect with a lot of, of um, friends and family that I grew up with. That's great to hear. Um, what does a typical work day look like for you? Um, there is not a typical work day in my position. Uh, I will give you an example. Uh, this morning, um, before 7 o'clock, I, I visited all four of the buildings. I was at Center, I was at Pivik, I was at HP, and I was at O Block. Uh, the district is currently in a transition moving away from our awareness tip line to our new safe to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to make sure that um, all of the uh, previous tip signs have been removed. Uh, before 9 o'clock this morning, I already had three meetings. And uh, I'm speaking later this evening at the PTA uh, meeting at PIVIC. Um, so a typical day usually is starting around 6.30 and sometimes not getting home until around 10, uh, 1030 at night. That's a lot of work. Lot of work. <laughs> um, how much commitment is needed to be an assistant superintendent of multiple elementary schools? Um, I think that in, in whatever one does in life, you, you, you need to have a commitment and a passion about what you do. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I remember my father telling me that if you enjoy what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. Um, and I, I love what I do. I love the opportunity and the impact that I have on removing barriers and, and, and uh, providing opportunities for students. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually the best part of my day is, is visiting classrooms. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what lessons have you learned about education being an administrator? Um, there's, there's many lessons that I've learned, but through my career, what I, what I have learned is that um, education is no longer uh, what you can recall. It's more about what you can do. And uh, what you're doing right now, the application of the class that you're taking, of going out and, and generating questions and, uh, and, and uh, putting together the video and, and broadcasting it. Uh, education has shifted more from knowing, knowing to what are you able to do and um, uh, applying that knowledge into a real world situation. Yeah, I agree. Um, what is your favorite part about working for Plum? Uh, I, I shared earlier, I enjoy getting into the classrooms. Uh, there, there are many initiatives that I had an opportunity coming in working with building principals, 
uh, looking at schedules, looking at resources, and seeing how those resources are, are being used with students in the classroom and how those resources are there to benefit students and uh, making sure um, that no matter what we do, we always keep the students um, uh, as our primary focus on all the decisions we make. That's great. Um, so it was brought to my attention that you were an all-star volleyball player back in high school. Um, what was it like being on such a successful team? Um, Playing in high school and, and, and the teams I played on had success. I was also a head coach in Mount Lebanon, mm -hmm. and I was very fortunate the teams that I coached had uh, success. Uh, the, the lessons that I shared with my players when I was at Mount Lebanon is that when I talk to people that I graduated with that were on my team, mm -hmm. none of us can really remember the scores or some of the matches. Mm -hmm. It was more about the relationships that we built, and some of my best friends today are – um, members that I played with back in 86 and 87 um, on the boys volleyball team here. Mm -hmm. So it's really about building those relationships and, and um, those relationships usually will last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so is there any advice that you can give the seniors here at Plum High School that are about to leave and start a new chapter with their lives? Uh, the best advice I could give is that uh, define your passion what 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 are you interested in? Um, many of the uh, students that are graduating this year, the class of 2019, will be entering the the the, the military. They'll be going right into um, careers, uh, and many will be going into college. And the best advice I could give them is um, is to follow your passion and to stay close to it. I would also share with them that. Um, they're coming from a school district that has a tremendous foundation and support um, that I know my experience was, um, you know, reaching out to some of my teachers, reaching out to friends that I've graduated with, uh, and community members, and that you, you, you live in a community that has a tremendous support system, and that don't ever forget that, and um, there's always somebody back in your home district that's going to help. Thank you so much for taking your time today, Dr. Rick Walsh. And now back to the studio. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Reese Jones here with John Zahorchek. Um, how's your day going, John? So far, so good. Uh, we've uh, we've costed out some negotiations already for uh, some contractual matters this morning, and uh, that's the first start of the morning. To, uh, this afternoon, we have some different meetings with, uh, to negotiate some new vendor contracts. So we've got a nice, full, busy day today ahead of us. Um, what sparked your interest in the business field? Uh, that's a, a good question. Um, my original major at college was um, was sports medicine, and I found out pretty quick that uh, the anatomy uh, and physiology, I just didn't have the, uh, you know, I didn't have it in me to, to be able to do that. So uh, I was taking some, you know, liberal art courses my first year, uh, freshman year of college, <clears throat> and I took a business class, and it was, um, it was a finance class, and it impacted me in a way, like, you know, how do you, um, you know, how to use those types of courses to, to make an impact, you know, and, and do it in a way that, that is ethical and do it in a way that uh, helps people, you know, and, and it, like, instantly, um, you know, and I had, it, had, had business classes with, with friends and, you know, some of them just didn't have that kind of interest or passion and, and I found it immediately, you know, after the first class I took. And then I, as I started to get more into it, um, you know, I recognized that that's something I wanted to do. You know, and um, then I went on to get my master's degree to continue that. And um, yeah, it's just always been something after that first course that that I knew that was sort of you know what was my calling. I didn't know it initially. You know, as a as a freshman in college, I don't have the I didn't have the focus that that you do. Um, it took me a while to figure it out, but once I did, uh, that's really where it was. And um, I have a family full of educators. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody in my family. 
just about as, as a teacher or was a teacher at one point in their life and uh, they've moved on to become administrators in some cases and in some cases they stayed teachers. Uh, so for me to, to use my business background in an educational setting just made sense for me, you know, mm -hmm. because it was like how do, how do you use the background that you've learned to, you know, impact um, the school district in, in a way that, uh, you know, helps kids. I think that's what what was really driving me to, to get into schools because I, I you know right out of college I worked for for big companies who their primary objective was to make profit you know and I think it's it's better you know in, in this setting and it's it's more fulfilling for sure to know that you're making an impact and and uh, I know sometimes you know the decisions we make as a district don't always um, it's not always you can't please everybody but I think the most important thing is to make sure that you know, we, we have uh, the ability to ensure that the school district just um, always has enough money to be able to, to, to survive. Um, it's crazy in public education right now because uh, there's a lot of forces outside that are working against public education. You know, we've got cyber charter schools, we've got just paying into uh, retirement, it's, it's just astronomically grown. So. There's a lot of things working against public schools right now, and we try to we try to push back. You know, we push against the federal government, the state. We uh, we push our legislators to you know to help us, you know, and, and support us. You know. I'm glad you were able to find your calling in college. You know, we even had to transition in between majors. I think that you were able to find your calling. I think that's really good. Um, so you're originally from Johnstown, and how long how did you end up in Plum? That's a good question. I I was. Um, um, before I was working in schools, I worked. I lived out uh, past Robinson Township. I, I love the Pittsburgh area. I think the Pittsburgh area has just got so much to offer. Um, we had our first child, and we moved back to Johnstown. That's where we're from originally, and that's where our family is, is all still pretty much based. Uh, but I've always wanted to get back. So, uh, but I wanted to be on the eastern part of, of Pittsburgh because it makes it easier for me to travel to see my family mm -hmm. before we used, to, we used to have to drive through both tunnels and some weekends when they close that tunnel and you're driving, <laughs> you know, a two hour drive yeah. turns into a four hour drive, yeah. uh, you know. So for me to be on the eastern part of Pittsburgh was, was, was important to me. Um, the position here was also appealing to me because when I first drove here the first time I just thought, uh, you know, it's it's just a, a really unique area you know it is a, it's you have access to the city without necessarily having to be in the city and I sort of the first time I drove here I was like wow this is I never knew of Plum I never knew anything about Plum but when I first arrived for my first interview I was like this this is somewhere where I could see myself being long term uh, and I and I enjoy it every day um, I still live in Johnstown I commute back and forth. It takes me about over an hour every day. So, yeah. so we're working. We're working. Uh, my family and I we're working to to get out to this area. I have a kindergartner and a sixth grader, mm -hmm. and I felt that after the school year it would be easier at the end of the school year just to make the transition. So we're mm -hmm. we're working our way out here slowly but surely. It's good. It's good. Uh, so you were board secretary for some time. How do you balance being in both positions? It was a, it was a challenge for me. Uh, the board secretary job and business manager was actually, um, it was a little bit overwhelming at some time. Sometimes, you know, after board meetings, gathering up all the notes. And um, so um, with the new position of executive assistant, which Charlene Payne has, I, mm -hmm. I voluntarily gave up the position of board secretary because it was, it was a lot to manage and it was... Um, it felt like it was it was getting in in the way of my ability to do my current job as the, as the business manager. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a it's a good question because it was it was a balancing act. You know, yeah. and some days you just didn't feel like you had enough time to get anything done throughout the course of the day. So, one of those things had to had to go. Yeah, that's a pretty high up position. So it seems like it'd be pretty overwhelming. Um, how long have you been a business manager for Plum? Uh, I started in, in September of 2016, so a little bit over two years now. Yeah. Uh, can you explain a typical day at work? It, it changes. Um, generally speaking, you would think a, a business office would be a, an accounting job with very repetitive daily operations, but that's mm -hmm. actually not the case at all. Uh, some of the people in, in the office do those types of tasks. They're very detail-oriented. I. However, I'm not that detail oriented, but I, I, I try to be more broad based and, and that's why the, this position works 
for me is because I like to have a variety of, of different things that I need to do out throughout the course of the day. So for an, exa an example today, I, I cost out some negotiations that we're currently in. Um, this afternoon I'll be meeting with different vendors uh, about the exploration of some different rental programs that we can bring into the district and try to bring in some extra money. So the variety is there every day, but primarily my responsibilities are to oversee the business office, which we're responsible for all the financial activities within the district. Receiving the money, getting the money into the bank, uh, paying bills, paying people, um, administering our benefit programs to, to the, all the staff in the district. Uh, so so there's, a, there's a lot of variety in the job, and I think that's what, what makes this job such an, a neat thing. And I always try to promote this field, um, school business, to any young student that's interested in business because business and education, it's, it's really an, a huge opportunity for students. I mean, if you get hired as, you could generally speaking get right, hired right out of college to work in a school business setting. Mm -hmm. And the, the pay is relatively good, the benefits are really good, uh, and, and, um, and the environment's good, you know, and, and, and you're also feeling like there's an impact that you're making. Mm -hmm. So uh, I promote it to, to young kids because, um, you know, there's a world of opportunity, you know, um, and, and a lot of people just don't know that. There's a lot of people that have retired over the past four or five years and it's leaving huge holes open in the field, which is actually driving up the market. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's competitive. You know, you're, you're going to get a competitive pay. So uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's going to just continue to, to grow for young kids. And, and I just think that a lot of times you, you just sort of fall into the job, you know, as mm -hmm. opposed to actually going out and looking for it. So mm -hmm. uh, I try to promote that. I try to just get people to understand that there's going to be a, a lot of openings in school business. You know, we, you know, there's always a need for accountants in schools, uh, people to handle payroll, people to handle benefits, you know, mm -hmm. people like me, the, the business managers. I mean, and these are good careers, too. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you enjoy most about your job? I, it, I think it is the, it's the, the variety. You know, for me, I enjoy um, being able to think about things uh, strategically. So I like to look at things and the impact uh, of what's going to happen in five years based on, you know, your current operations. So mm -hmm. for me, it's, it's that long-term look and it's, it's really the variety of the different things that you do in order to meet your, you know, what, I, it's strategy, but it's what your your long term vision is, and how the daily tasks and then the monthly tasks, how that all ties into what you want to do at the end of the day. You know, at the end of the five years, did you accomplish what you set out to be, and having different targets that are that are in there. So, to me, that's that's the most enjoyable part of the job. And and I and I also like you know I like numbers. You know, so uh, I like to, to to see how you know we we put a budget together every year, so to compare mm -hmm. that against your actual performance. Um, and then ways you can drive that, you know, ways that you can make it better or mm -hmm. ways that you can bring in additional revenue, um, mm -hmm. ways that you can look at expenditures differently too. I, I like the, the creative solve problem solving that, mm -hmm. that this job allows you to have. Yeah. Um, what do you enjoy most about Plum? Um, my favorite thing about Plum is the community. Uh, it's it's uh, one of the, the most close-knit communities I've ever seen. Uh, you know, there's always a different activity, and it seems like everybody from the community is, in, is involved in, in one way, shape, or form. And, and also, you know, the access, you know, the, the access to the city that you have from here, and um, and, and the sort of laid-back laid approach, you know, that you don't have the, you know, you're not in the fast pace of the city, but you have a really quick access to it, but you also have just a, a good, close-knit group of people in this community that, are, that value family, and I think mm -hmm. that's one of the things that, that appealed to, to me whenever I took the job. It's good that you moved out here to a place like Plum, where everybody's close and, you know, everybody stays connected. Um, do you think that in 2019, the district will have a good fiscal year and continue moving forward? I think so, yeah. I think, uh, you know, we made some very difficult decisions, decisions we didn't want to make, but we were sort of in a position where... We didn't have many choices, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but the objective was was to fix it and and ensure that we can last long term and we don't have to worry about money. Uh, recently in the newspaper, uh, Penn Hills, who was sort of in a similar position to us financially, 
who didn't make many, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, they, they were more limited than us in, in the things that they can do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the state's coming in and, and looking at taking over their school. And, uh, you know, there was a risk of that here. Yeah. And so uh, we did what we felt we had to do. Uh, it wasn't always easy, you know, because it was, gonna, it was some hard decisions there, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing was to, to do what needed to be done and try to maintain the programs that existed in the district and not start to really cut those types of things, uh, you know, and, and try to bring in some additional tax revenue as well. So um, I do, yeah, I think our financial position is pretty stable right now, and I think it will only improve as, as the years go by. Well, you guys heard it here first. It's Reese Jones with John Zahorczak, and we'll see you guys later. Hi, I'm Jenna Moorhead here with Ms. Fight, Assistant Principal of Holiday Park and O'Block Junior High. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. good. So, what is it like to be the Assistant Principal of two buildings near each other? Mm. Well, it's interesting. Um, I think it's nice that they're close so I don't have to drive anywhere. Um, but I do enjoy being at both buildings because I think I get to see two different um, perspectives. You know, there's ways that we do things here at the junior high that are a little different than at Holiday Park. So I think it um, really helps to uh, open my perception as to how we can help students transition um, and kind of gets us ready for what's coming up to the junior high. Very nice. Is it hard being assistant principal of two buildings at different age groups? Yeah, I don't think the age group is as much of a difference because Holiday Park is a 5-6 building um, and we're 7-8, so I don't really see a huge age issue or discrepancy between the ages um, at, at this point. I think the hardest part is just being in two buildings, learning two sets of staff, learning two sets of students, um, and, and really trying to connect with everybody in both buildings. I, I would say that's probably the most difficult part. Sounds difficult. What school is easier to be vice principal at? At the junior high or the elementary school? Oh, well, I don't know that either one is easier than the other. Uh, I think each building brings different, uh, you know, different challenges, uh, different needs. Um, you know, the Holiday Park building has the activity or the uh, discovery period at the end of the day. So there's a lot of initiatives that are happening over there. Um, you know, we do some different things here. I, I, I don't think that one is harder or easier. I think more so they're just different, uh, different needs, different um levels of of you know discipline and um social social issues but I, I i wouldn't i can't say one's harder than the other i think they're both hard <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> uh being a principal at two different schools how do you interact and bond with the students uh that's really important for me i think um, bonding with students is is a huge part of what I need to do to build relationships. So um, I try to spend time in classrooms, obviously, um, getting to know students and teachers. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm available, I try to go into lunches, I attend athletic events here at O-Block. Uh, so just trying to get students to see me in a different light, um, you know, in different situations. Um, I try to connect with students as much as possible. So, you know, I have a running list at Holiday Park and a running list at O-Block of students that I just check in on based on interactions that we'd had um, earlier in the year so uh, just really try to be out in the building and um, in classrooms and at events that uh, you know aren't necessarily always inside the school day. Uh, what is the hardest challenge at the junior high and the hardest challenge at the elementary school? I think initially the hardest challenge for me was just trying to get to know everybody, um, trying to get to know two sets of students. You know, there's 500 plus students in each oh building. So trying to learn um, all the students. I mean, I still there's still students I don't know by name, but I know by face. Um, so I, I think, you know, that that certainly um, was an issue. But I also think to being new to the district is just getting out there and having people know who I am and uh, learn about me and learn about families and um, you know just becoming a member of the Plum community and not just you know the principal or the assistant principal at, at two schools. That's understandable. Is it an easy transition from the elementary school to going to the junior high? For me or for the kids? For you. <laughs> for me. Uh, again I think it's pretty easy with Holiday Park being a 5-6 building. Um, if it was you know the K-4 building to a junior high I think there would be a much 
bigger transition, but um, I think the philosophy of how I try to serve as a principal remains the same in that I think students come first. Uh, what's best for students is, is how we make decisions, and I don't know that that changes from one grade level to the next. Um, so I don't, I don't think that it's much of a transition. I think having the schools on both, uh, on a single campus is helpful because it doesn't feel like they're making so much of a change. You know, leaving here and going to the high school, it's a whole new building, a whole oh, new yeah. location. Whereas there, they're just feeling like they're kind of coming across the street. You know, they see, they, both schools see me. Um, I walk, I'm notorious for walking across the parking lot. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that, I, I don't imagine it'll be a difficult transition f for, for the students or for me. Sounds a lot easier than when I did it. <laughs> um, what is the best part of being principal of the two schools? Uh, I think the kids, obviously. Um, just, you know, getting to know them, um, trying to help them grow and, and be prepared for, you know, the next step, whether it's um, a new school, um, a career, um, college, what, whatever it is, I think we're playing a role in their long-term success. So that's the best part for me is just being part of those stepping stones that'll get kids to that ultimate level of success. Um, you know, there's already some students that I'm really excited to see what happens to them when they get to the high school yeah. and, and kind of how they progress through their life. Um, and, and just learning, you know, coming to a new district. I'm originally from this area, but I feel very new. Uh, mm -hmm. So just, you know, learning, learning about the community, learning about the students, um, th that for me is, is the best part. It's the best part of my day. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Fight, for let, taking your time out of your day for this interview. We hope you have a great day. Back to you guys. Thank you. Hi, I'm Harley Craig, and I'm here with Mrs. Gibson, one of the Plum Senior High School school psychologists. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's Friday. <laughs> it is. So uh, what do you do in your line of work? So I work with students directly, usually as a first step, and I might do some assessments with them to figure out how they learn, and then I work with uh, teachers and parents and other administrators to make sure that we're supporting students the best way that we can. Well, that's great. So how long have you been a school psychologist? Uh, for seven years. Okay, and uh, how long have you been with Plum? For six years. Okay, so where did you work before this job? Before Plum, I worked at Wellsboro Area School District, which is uh, in the northern part of Pennsylvania, um, and then I moved, I'm from this area originally, so then I moved back home um, during my second year. That's great. So what do you plan on doing after you retire? Oh, uh, um, I really like doing things outside, so I feel like maybe I'll move somewhere warmer <laughs> with a better climate where I can do more things out, outside year-round. Um, I'm not so much into the, the winter activity. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> so why did you want to become a school psychologist? Uh, I've always been, I've always liked being in schools. I Originally, I thought I would be a teacher, um, and then in high school, I took a psychology class, and I realized I like psychology, uh, and so this is a really good a uh, combination of both being in schools and around students, but also the psychology end of things. That's great. So what is the most important thing about your job? Uh, I think the most important thing is being able to work in teams uh, with, with the other staff here at the school. Um, and then obviously being able to work with students and have a connection with them so that, you know, I, I kind of get the best, um, the best representation of how they're actually doing in school. So how did you figure out that you wanted to be a school psychologist? Uh, similar to like what I was saying when I took the psychology class in high school. Um, and then I think when I was in college, I was a psychology major. Um, and at one point, uh, somebody from IUP's school psychology program came out and talked about school psychology. And prior to that, I, I don't even think I knew really what a school psychologist was. Mm -hmm. Um, because we're a little bit different than a clinical psychologist and I was really interested in, in it at that point and then I kind of decided that was going to be my career goal and it went from there. That's nice. So thank you for taking your time out of your day to interview with me. Have a nice day.
Hi, I'm Melinda Pivik here with Center Building Principal Mr. Nisley. So how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank Great. you for asking. So what does it take to be building principal? Oh, to be the building principal, I think it takes a lot of patience. Patience and understanding, I think, is uh, what, what helps us the best here. I definitely agree with that. How do you feel about being principal of Center Elementary? Uh, Center is a great school. This year we changed to K-4, to so that's a new experience for all of us here. Our, our teachers, we have about 40% new teachers and 60% new students, so it's been a great learning experience for us all. Okay. Okay, what is the best part about being center principal? Oh, the best part is probably uh, being able to interact with all of our students and families here. We have wonderful kids, wonderful families, and great teachers, and it's just one big happy family. It's fantastic. That sounds awesome. What do you do to interact with your students here? Uh, we're out in the classroom as much as we can. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, arrival and dismissal down here in the office, which I'm always able to uh, talk with our students. Lunchtime is a great time and recess is a great time to meet with our students as well. So we interact with them as, as much as we can throughout the day. Sounds like a good idea. Okay, how long have you been a principal and what made you want to become a principal? I've been a principal, I've been a principal for 14 years and I've been here in Plum for 12 and uh, just uh, moving through the process I was a teacher for nine years and enjoyed the leadership position and uh, decided to give being a principal a shot and I've enjoyed it ever since. That's good, that's good. What is your favorite center school activity to do with the students? Oh, probably when we do any type of a reading activity where we're uh, reading to get something done uh, that might be a little silly to me. So <laughs> whether it's uh, getting my head shaved or uh, taped to a wall, those are probably our favorite things to do. Okay, so. well, off of that, what is the most rewarding thing about your job? Um, probably get to see our, our students develop from uh, kindergarten students up until in the past to, to sixth graders and, and now through fourth grade. So getting to see our students grow and develop into fine young citizens is probably the best part. Sounds like an amazing experience. Thank you for taking time out of your day. No we problem. appreciate it. Back Thank to you, you guys. Hi, I'm Alexis Smith and I'm here with Mr. Shoup, the Plum Borough School District Athletic Director. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. So what made you want to go into the field? Uh, I've always been involved in sports. Um, my father was a varsity coach for 38 years. Um, I played sports in high school, played in college, um, and then I just had a passion for working with kids and uh, trying to help coaches. All right. Next, um, do you enjoy working as an athletic director and why? Uh, I do enjoy it. Um, it you know, it, it's nice to be able to organize a whole department. Um, it's a challenge. Um, it can be difficult at times, but um, you know, once you get the once you get the, the groundwork set, um, it, it really can be a great job. All right, awesome. Um, how long have you been an athletic director? Uh, this is my 18th year uh, being an athletic director. All right. Uh, what is the best part of your job? Uh, the best part is the kids, um, always, you know, the, the, the job has changed. Uh, in the beginning, I got to spend a lot more time with the student athletes. Uh, now, I don't get to spend as much, but uh, that is still the, the best part of the job is, uh, you know, seeing kids grow up, seeing them get better, seeing them move on to, you know, a different level of their, uh, their athletics. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Um, so what is the hardest part? Uh, the hardest part is the paperwork. Um, you know, you can't see my desk right now, but there is a lot of paperwork involved in mm -hmm. education in general, not just athletics, um, but just keeping up with all the, um, the, the policies, the procedures, um, you know, just keeping up with everything can be challenging. Mm -hmm. So what was your best experience from your job? Um, you know, I'll draw on, you know, I've only been here for about, I think, eight weeks now, so uh, I'll draw on my experience from Pine Richland, you know, seeing some of those teams uh, do so well, um, the state finals uh, in football and basketball, um, you know, field hockey. I mean, we had some great teams and we got to see some, uh, some, some great sports, but uh, getting to that height as some, with some of our teams was really something to see. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so what's the main difference between your old job and your new job now? Um, you know, I'm still figuring that out. Um, at my old position, um, I did have uh, two dedicated secretaries, which um, here I, I do have one, um, and mm -hmm. she split time. But um, the major difference is the amount of kids. Um, I think Plum has about 100 kids less per class. Mm -hmm. um, the number of sports, uh, we had a few more sports at Pine Richland. Um, so it's just the volume, I think, is different. That's mm -hmm. the ma major difference. Definitely. Okay, so my last question is, what is your favorite sport? 
high school sport to watch and why? Well, you know, I've learned to appreciate all of them. I was a basketball player myself, um, but I've really learned to appreciate, you know, soccer, swimming, uh, lacrosse, foot, you know, foot. I was, for looking at me, I wasn't a football player in high school. <laughs> I played basketball, um, but I, I do enjoy, I truly enjoy all of them. I, I really enjoy watching kids at the beginning of the season, at the end, and see mm -hmm. how they've gotten better and how the team's gotten better um, and how coaches have gotten better. Okay, so that was all my questions. Thank you for coming in and interviewing today. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you.